Hey guys, it's Matt. Welcome to Speed Tutor, and this video is going to sum up everything that Unity announced at their keynote for Unite 2023. And I know some of you joined me in the watch along, and it's on my channel if you missed out on that on the live tab. So they announced some features of dots, some brand new URP samples for loads of support across platforms. They announced the new version of Unity with some actually cool features looking at a Fantasy Kingdom demo. They looked at full multiplayer support, all their new cloud services, which are now in early access. They looked at Unity Muse and all of the AI tools, brand new AI tools that are not yet launched with some information on copyright, because I know everybody's interested in that. And then information on Unity Centis and how you can use that. New web, GPU and mobile support, partnerships with Meta and a lot of integrations with new Apple products. Unity did announce the new name for Unity 2023 LTS, which will be Unity 6 going forward. So this is what naming convention they will keep. Then they moved on to a really cool demo, which is called Fantasy Kingdom, which is in HDRP. But all these features that I'm going to mention and were shown in the demo will be supported in URP and high-end mobile too. This was a big demo using assets from Cinti Studio and Unity have introduced a brand new rendering technology to render massive scenes with lots of detail, lots of post-processing, custom lighting, and lots of characters walking around. And usually it wouldn't be possible to render this in Unity. And they were showing some demos with their brand new features called GPU Resident Draw, which actually reduces CPU bottlenecking, which you get when it comes to batching. And in their demo, they go from 137,000 batches down to 13,000 by enabling a resident draw, which I think is from what they said, one click and it's all done dynamically. Then they've added a brand new occlusion culling, which is GPU based occlusion culling to reduce a vertex counts. So instead of it being something that you have to set up yourself, you can automatically do it and they reduce the vertex count from 47 million to 40 million. And as I said, it happens dynamically, so you don't need to do it yourself. They did mention that these were the improvements in the actual editor. And if you do it inside a build, your improvements will be even bigger. They've got a brand new feature called the Spatial Temporal Post Processing, or STP for short, which allows you to upscale on a wide range of platforms. With the example, they knocked up the post processing level and it brought the FPS down to a snail pace. They upped the STP upscaler and the performance was increased by up to 50% and even across mobile and you don't lose any quality across your overall scene and post processing. And you didn't require to make any changes to the current game or content models or anything like that to get these improvements. And they did show improvements to the lighting with a new system called adaptive probe volumes, which usually to bake out your global illumination or other lighting, you will need to bake this or manually add probes all around your scene. Now these probes are all placed automatically and you can dynamically light any object in the world without everything being static like in other versions. And they have made improvements to Speedtree and it will have improvements to any assets made in Speedtree in previous versions. So you will see drastic improvements in rendering for those too. A really cool example was the adaptive probe volume of blending, which you can take and use timeline and you can transition from two lighting states. In the example, it is from day to night. So you can transition in real time without any effort at all because you can blend between lighting scenarios. They talked about Unity Muse, their brand new suite of AI tools, which are now in early access. And they do have a free trial, I think, at the moment and will require subscription. Those with the subscription, you will get access to all their new tools that they're bringing out. And I'll mention the ones that are already out, which I've got on my channel as tutorials. And I will put all the links in the description so you can check those videos out. Now, Unity made a very big point about copyright. They've got a responsibly trained model and Unity are 100% confident that they're committed that you can use this content in production. So it's 100% legally safe to use it and in the unlikely event that you do have any issues with the content that you've generated and Unity will legally represent you in any legal matters. So Unity Sprite is for generating sprites and there's a sprite trainer to be able to make it look like the art of the generation that you already have in your project. Muse Texture and you can create PBR textures with text prompts. Unity Muse, similar to ChatGPT, to be able to write text prompts, get generate code and help surrounded in a Unity centric manner. And there's priority access to Muse Animation, Muse Behavior and Muse Sketch. 
and Muse Animation allows you to generate humanoid animations with text prompts. So if this is what it suggests, if you won't need external libraries, you won't need motion capture, you'll get something generated exactly out of the box. Then you've got Unity Behavior and Sketch, which work together. And Sketch is about collaborating with teams in real time. It supports all languages and you can build interactive scenes using that and drag and drop props and everything in to be able to block out scenes, demos, and projects. Muse Behavior will allow you to use text prompts in natural language to add elements and gameplay features in a graph-based style to actually increase your workflow. So I know it's a running joke, but everybody who's interested in dots, this is actually for you. I don't know who you are, but you are somewhere. And they're releasing production-ready version of dots in Unity 2023 LTS. And they did show an example from a game called Hostile Mars, which has got thousands of enemies with pathfinding and AI, and it does achieve 60 FPS. And it's a really cool example of on how this system can allow you to create lots and lots and lots of objects that do interesting behavior and still render those on screen. And in 2024, they're adhering to make improvements for rendering, iteration times, and lots of features across dots. Then they did show four different URP samples, which is supported across various platforms. So the first one was something called Terminal, which is a great sort of test bed to test out materials and basic lighting. They showed off a stylized scene called Garden, which has custom features like decal projectors, temporal anti-aliasing, and it's got a new high-end forward rendering, which actually allows you to use dozens of real-time lights without switching to deferred lighting. And this actual demo runs on 60 FPS on mobile, so it's highly optimized and it supports across multiple platforms too. Then they showed a higher end demo called Oasis, which is specifically targeted to higher end devices, including high end mobile with custom shaders and subsurface scattering across the board. And it reaches 60 FPS on iPad Pro with loads of improvements in lighting and things within there. And then one more demo, which was called Cockpit, which is specifically for VR which is for MetaQuest 2 and beyond, which includes a custom rendering pipeline and lighting model to be able to show you how you can integrate this and transform URP to something that you want to use. And all of these samples can be downloaded today for you to try them out. I will make a video on looking at them all. And then Unity did move on to a multiplayer support, which they've shown an example, and it will have a sample called Mega City Metro, which is a multiplayer sample for low-end devices as well as really high-end console and it's all based on dots with physics and native netcode and it's integrated with lots of unity services and it'll be released around 2024 and they've been working on various multiplayer inclusive enhancements for safe voice and moderation so you can make your games a little bit less toxic if that is interesting to you then they went on to talk about unity cloud which is currently in early access and with the cloud services there's a brand new asset manager which allows you to track manage and share game assets so say you're an artist you can drag and drop the model into the collection the system will generate previews and tags Everybody else in your project or in your workspace can view the 3D model in a 3D viewer, be able to drag this out into their scene so everybody has access to it and it's much easier than having things merged into your project at any one time. And they even talked about build automation and content cloud delivery to be able to push updates to players without them actually needing to install new versions and then a brand new Unity Cloud dashboards. And if you like collaborating with others, it's all in one place so it reduces 80 percent of the groundwork of logging into multiple places and messing around with that they had some parts about unity centis and showed a demo of a set of characters that you're in a taxi and they were able to have natural based conversations between what the first character said and the other character responded and it was all natural responses based on the conversation. So you'll be able to create living worlds which interactively evolve over time and be different for every single person. Then Unity looked at mobile web support. So they've got a brand new feature called Web GPU. More detail with no performance loss, which I'm going to guess is going to replace a WebGL in some way. So you'll be able to support mobile and web in a much, much better fashion. Unity are partnering with Meta, which is going to be an instant games library for better getting your title on that platform and then also support for Apple Vision Pro and other XR 
and VR features which they just briefly touched on quickly at the end. So I think overall the conference has some interesting features, most notably some of the additions to lighting and things for larger scale and optimizations. Then the integrations of the AI and looks like they're becoming more and more powerful and Unity are really, really pushing subscriptions for these because they obviously wanted to make more money after the runtime fee debacle. Do remember, I'll put all the links below so you can check it all out and all the videos that I've made on all the stuff. And if you've got any questions at all, do put them down below and I'll be sure to answer them. Do let me know what you think. Check out all the links in the description for the Black Friday sale and everything that you can save now. Do be sure to check out my Patreon to get access to over 205 different scripts, assets and projects you cannot find anywhere else. And I've currently got 40% off on my assets on my website. If you use the code STBFF40, I'll put the link down in the description on all my assets on my website. And thank you so much to all my patrons. Big thank you to Peter Steiner and everybody else who comes to watch the video. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Cheers.